Oh Lord, good afternoon. Good evening. I got to read this story to you guys in hopes that y'all take this adoption stuff real, real serious, okay? This is an exclusive um, article from the Daily Mail, okay? It, uh, she tried to kill us. Indiana mother who adopted a six-year-old Ukrainian girl with dwarfism has been charged with abandonment but claims her daughter was found to be a 22-year-old sociopath masquerading as a child. Like that movie, The Orphan. Oh, man. Christine Barnett, 45, and ex-husband Michael Barnett, 43, have been charged with abandoning their daughter when she was nine in Lafayette, Indiana, and fleeing to Canada. In an exclusive interview with the Daily Mail TV, Christine denies the claims and says that she and Michael were victims of fraud, claiming that the girl they adopted was an adult con artist who tried to kill her. Christine and Michael agreed to an emergency adoption of a Ukrainian-born Natalie Grace in May of 2010 from Florida where they were told she was six. Within the year, uh, Christine claims Nat Natalia tried pushing her into an electric fence, pour bleach in her coffee, and threatened to stab the Barnetts in their sleep. Natalia was treated by mental health specialists who determined that she was an adult and pressed for the course to have her birth certificate changed. In 2012, Marion County Superior Court, Indiana, decided that Natalie was born in 1989 based upon medical evidence. The Barnetts moved to Canada and left Natalie, I know, Natalie in an apartment. You damn right. You old enough to take care of your damn self. Oh, and um, they left her in an apartment in Lafayette. A September 11 affidavit of probable cause obtained by the Daily Mail TV states that experts carried out a bone density test on Natalia in June 2010 and concluded that she was eight years old. A typical New County Sheriff's Department alleged that Natalia was a child when they abandoned her in 2013. Arrest warrant was issued both uh, both Michael and Catherine surrendered to authorities and have been released on bail. It is all the elements of a horror movie. An unsuspecting Christian couple adopts an adorable little girl only to discover she is an adult sociopath masquerading as a child. If the premise sounds familiar, that's because it's virtually the exact plot of a 2009 big screen chiller, Orphan where a pigtail youngster tries to murder her family when it's revealed that she is really 33 years old. But as far-fetched as it sounds, this is an astonishing defense put forward by a mom of three and parenting author shockingly accused of felony neglect after abandoning her adopted daughter. Christine Barnett, 45, and her ex-husband Michael adopt, are alleged to have adopted and dumped the Ukrainian-born Natalie Grace at an apartment. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Before moving to Canada, the girl tried to kill him. What the? Uh. Uh. Christine says that they were uh, victims of fraud, and uh, uh, and the girl that they adopted tried to kill her. Oh my God! This is insane, you guys. They got pictures of the little girl, but this is a story that's in the daily. Um, police say the girl was left to fend for herself for three years despite having a rare form of dwarfism. That means she is three feet tall and a, has a problem walking. But in an exclusive interview with the Daily Mail at an undisclosed location, Christine insists there is a major flaw in their case. Natalia was not a nine-year-old as charging documents claim. She is actually 22 years old. Oh my God. She's actually 22 years 
wait a minute, y'all. Damn, this story gets more bizarre by the damn second. <sighs> Barnett claims the true victims are her and her family who were terrorized for years by the mysterious imposter who threatened to stab them in their sleep, pushed her towards an electric fence, and poured bleach in her coffee. The movie Orphan is exactly what happened. She would make statements and draw pictures saying she wanted to kill family members, roll them up in blankets, and put them in the backyard, she told uh, Daily Mail TV. She was standing over people in the middle of the night. You couldn't go to sleep. We had to hide all the sharp objects. I saw her putting chemicals, bleach, Windex, something like that in my coffee. And I asked her, what are you doing? And she said, I'm trying to poison you. The media is painting me out to be a child abuser, but there, are, there is no child here. Natalia is a woman. She has had periods. She had adult teeth. She never grew a single inch, which would happen even with a child with dwarfism. The, the doctors all confirmed that she was suffering from a severe psychological illness only diagnosed in adults. Oh my God. She was jumping out of moving cars. She was smearing blood on mirrors. She was doing things you could never imagine a little child doing. Before criminal charges were leveled at them on September 11th, the Barnett and ex-husband Michael were held as exemplary parents who raised child genius Jake Barnett. Diagnosed with autism at the age of two, Jake nonetheless had his first academic paper published at 12 and by 15 he was studying at the prestigious Thesis Institute. Oh my God, oh Lord, I can't believe this. His story was featured in a 2012 episode of CBS 60 Minutes, but it was the shy girl who sat to his left at the family dinner that would one day prompt altogether the all the sinister, more sinister headlines. Damn, the Barnett's. The Barnett's experienced foster, were experienced foster parents who ran a children's daycare from their Westfield, Indiana home, collected the curly-haired youngster from Florida in May of 2010. While living with the Barnett's, Natalia's adoption was completed in November that year. In a frank and tearful interview with the Daily Mail, Christine Barnett insisted that she treated a new addition to her family as if it were her own biological child. She had no hesitation in accepting Natalia's despite her learning that she had a bone growth disorder named spondylomyelitis, some damn name they made up, dysplasia, which causes short stature, skeletal, skeletal abnormalities. Okay? I always wanted to have a larger family, and I had a severe complications in my pregnancies, and I was unable to have more children. I also at that time had a, lived a very privileged life and I felt that I had the ability to help another person in the world um, so I wanted to do it. Given just 24 hours to complete the emergency adoption, the couple raced to an adoption center in Florida to sign the paperwork and meet their new six-year-old daughter. They gleaned precious few details on her background. Natalia had been in the USA for two years had a Ukrainian birth certificate reading September 4th, 2003 and needed a home immediately because her previous adoptive parents suddenly gave up on her. You think? For undisclosed reason. Out of compassion for their situation, I didn't want to press them for information of what had gone wrong. And uh, <laughs> the mom went on. Mm. Dad. Michael Barnett is pictured holding his new daughter Natalia in 2010 in Florida just days after collecting her from an adoption agency. And she looks like about a three, maybe about a five year old. 
Oh my God, this is the freakiest story. And I think you should go there and look at the site at the Daily Mail because they have pictures of little girls so you can kind of get an idea. N Natalia was extremely nervous. You could see she was going to need a lot of support and care. We did notice immediately in the parking lot that she couldn't walk. There was nothing in the paperwork stating that she couldn't walk. Over the next few days, the couple showered her with attention, taking her to Disney World, enjoying ice cream treats and uh, pillow fights with her, uh, other th with her three brothers, and she began to slowly come out of her shell. When they took her to the beach for the first time, she did something that would leave the couple speechless. The boys rushed into the water and Natalia wanted to be carried into the ocean. Michael and myself were physically exhausted, so we asked her to wait just a few minutes. With that, she got up and ran into the ocean. I remember looking at Mike and thinking, what the hell's going on? She couldn't walk a second ago, and now she just got up and ran? The Barnetts grew more alarmed when she saw the little girl naked for the first time. I was giving her a bath and I noticed that she had full pubic hair. I was so shocked. I had just been told she was six, a six year old and it was very apparent that she wasn't. There were further clues in an apparent deception. Natalia shunned dolls and toys, sought the company of teenage girls and appeared to use sophisticated vocabulary way beyond someone of her years. She didn't have any trace of a foreign accent, and when the family asked a Ukrainian friend to speak to her in her language, Natalia couldn't understand or describe anything in her homeland. At the time, I ran a little school, and I do remember she said to me, these children are exhausting. I don't know how you do it. I was like, you're supposed to be a child yourself. It was like something another mom would say as she dropped her kids off. It's very hard to decipher how old she is because she is such, has such a unique look. But at that time, I started to believe that she was probably a teenager. But I didn't have any regrets. Not at that point. This is what I wanted to do. I felt overwhelming love for her. Barnett says she soon began to find bloody clothing in, in the trash, suggesting that she was having her period and trying to conceal the evidence. She sought to help her out, sought her fa she, she sought out the help of her family physician who ordered a bone density test to establish her age. When the results suggested that the little girl was indeed at least 14 or older, Barnett said she switched the princess outfits and pink dresses for more appropriate clothing. But as questions swirled around her age and true identity, Natalia's behavior began to deteriorate. Barnett recalls watching the gas on the baby monitor as Natalia attacked a baby boy when she was out of the room. When they attended therapy together, Natalia scoffed at the childish bonding exercises. By 2011, Barnett says that Natalia was smearing blood, bloody bodily fluids on the walls, making death threats and hearing voices and as her mental health broke down. Natalia would spend the next year or so being treated for various psychiatric disorders, spending days to weeks at a time at St. Vincent Indianapolis Stress Center. When Barnett claimed she tried to drag her on an electric fence in 2012 on a birthday outing, Natalia was placed long term at a state run psychiatric unit because she allegedly posed a risk to others. It was during treatment that Barnett insists that Natalia confessed to being far older than she appeared. Barnett presented Daily Mail with a trove of paperwork that appeared to confirm her versions of the event and the healthcare professional shared gave her uh, grave concerns. One clinical therapist in 2012 said Natalia claimed to them that she was 18. Oh my God. Then at LaRue Carter Hospital in Indianapolis in 2012, staff said she had described how she tried to kill family members and had no remorse about it. And she was going as far as to describe it as fun. 
The most revealing, perhaps of all, is a letter from the Barnett's primary care physician, um, dated back from March 2012, when in which he states that Natalia's 23 birth date was clearly inaccurate, and that Natalia had made a career out of pretending to be a young child. He said Natalia even fooled him, her parents, and other physicians. It was also in 2012 that police first began asking questions. Although correspondence reviewed by Daily Mail TV suggested they were trying to establish whether an immigration fraud had took place before the Barnetts had any involvement with Natalia. Mm, 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 mm. 